Hey folks, we're here today in New Hampshire. We're going to do a very quick review of the SIG 226. Many of you, I'm sure, are very familiar with this gun. Excellent accuracy, uh, extremely reliable, and very popular with both law enforcement and the military. Uh, this gun I purchased used. It was a police trade-in. Um, had some holster wear, but other than the holster wear, the gun is just in pristine shape. My guess is it had only been fired a couple hundred rounds a year, if that. So uh, it's been excellent. I think they're superior products. I do have a, a couple of issues with them that really have to relate to me in the way my small hands, but also in relation to the double to single action transition. Um, one thing you'll note with the SIG is that it does have these safeties such as de a decock uh, lever um, but the double action pull is extremely long and really hard and so unless you're training with that as your primary weapon if you go like I do have many different guns and you go back and forth between them that's a bit of a problem particularly in transition between single action to double action and then also accuracy as it relates to first shot from holster. One of the things you see many people do when they shoot SIGs or any kind of double action is they'll come out to the range, they'll insert a round, and then they'll fire, they'll always fire in the single action mode. Well, the single action mode is a three and a half, four pound uh, you know, trigger. It's very nice, very easy to do. But the problem is, is that's not how you'd carry it or how you'd actually use the handgun if you had to from a defensive standpoint. So enough talking. We're going to go ahead and shoot it and give you some impressions on that and uh, we'll go from there. Okay, I've got a target up here, cardboard target. We're going to shoot at it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to shoot four rounds double action. And each time I'm going to decock, I'll bring it back down to a ready, come up and fire again. And I'm going to just work for accuracy through that double action stroke. Then we'll use, we'll do some double taps. And again, I want to make it perfectly clear, full disclosure here, I do not shoot this type of firearm on a regular basis. So those who do will likely, um, and I've seen them in competition, shoot extremely well. I have a very good friend who uh, retired. He was the master chief with DevGru. Um, this was his primary or backup weapon, you know, secondary sidearm for 20 years, he shoots this gun, uh, it's just scary to see. But again, it has to do with what you train, and those guys shoot tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of rounds. So we're going to take a look at this, and again, we're going to just go slow uh, and, and really try to press through that double action shot and keep it right on target as we do that. Okay. So I'm having to really work to keep the sights aligned as I press through that 12 rounds of pull. But the group is good. But I have to say, it's, it, it takes a tremendous amount of work for me because I'm not used to practicing it. So we're going to take a real quick uh, look down range and see what uh, our target looked like. Okay, so from five meters, five yards, something somewhere, maybe six, uh, double action, you, uh, very, very, very deliberate. But you can see the gun is capable of excellent accuracy. Um, it just, you have to practice and work at it. So now I'm going to do uh, basically that same drill, but I'm going to do it in uh, single action, so I'll fire the first shot double action and then I'll transition to uh, single action. We'll see what that looks like. Okay, so double action, I'll shoot the first shot double action and then I'll transition to five shots in uh, single action mode. And you can see when we zoom in on the results up there, uh, again, very, very accurate gun. And this is one of the reasons why, why SIGs are so popular with so many shooters is their level of, of uh, accuracy is just phenomenal. So you can see there just a really tight little group from uh, five yards. 
and um, very, very easy to do that. The one thing for my small hands that is difficult is the fact that the, the frame of the gun itself is relatively large, so I really have to, you know, and then my the position of my finger, I kind of have to reach to get that. Once I'm in single action, um, the gun is far easier for me to shoot and get good hits. Didn't lock open on that last one. I, very old magazine. I need to replace the springs and followers in these. Um, but you can see, very controllable and um, from a shooter standpoint, it certainly feels good to shoot. So again, I'm going to close. You can see that I'm in single action mode. I'm going to drop uh, the slide, the slide release forward, cycle that round forward. And um, then you can see that the distance of the trigger is very, very short. And in fact, I'm going to go ahead and decock the gun. This is one thing you have to remember about the SIGs when you're shooting them. You actually have got to operate that. Every time you holster, you've got to remember to decock. So you've got to make sure that you decock because you do not want to put this gun uh, in that single action mode back into your holster. No, no. Big no, no. So I'm going to go ahead. I'll fire one shot double action and then I'll move over to the camera to show you the distance. So we're shooting right here, right? So I've got to press through this relatively long double action trigger. I'm going to do that right now. Okay? And now, right away, I'm into single action. And this single action trigger is quite nice. Not one of them's locked open, so I assume that's a mag. Uh, mag release here one nice thing about the SIGs versus <laughs> some other guns Glocks um, is they really positively eject the mag so what I've got is really old springs in these and I need to replace them so the follower comes up and actually locks the uh, slide back as it goes you note the placement of the release is right here it's actually for my hands it's in a better place than some other guns uh, but again we've got a thick relatively big gun for the size of round. The advantage to that is recoil mitigation. This gun is very, very accurate. The downsize is for someone like me getting into that double action pull. It is so long that it makes it tough. So let's talk about trigger reset. So um, once you fire through, right, your gun is has cycled the trigger reset is relatively short. It's right there. It's very distinct. And then that next movement is that take up is, is minuscule. It's very, very small. So if you're just shooting this gun and you say, well, I'm going to just primarily come out here to the range. I'm going to cycle around into the chamber and um, shoot it in single action. You'll say all day long, wow, this is just fabulous, because it is fabulous. It's very easy to get good hits on target. Yet another magazine. <laughs> uh, easy to get good hits on target without having to, uh, to do a lot. But the, it's the transition from double to single that can be learned. It's obviously learned by, you know, uh, SEALs and a number of other uh, defensive forces uh, throughout the United States. Uh, including law enforcement officers, but it's something that has to be practiced religiously. So we're going to do a couple of uh, fast fire strings and uh, then we're going to wrap it up. I'm going to try to line the sights and press through the double action trigger. So I'm just going to go two center, one head. Okay, so here's what that's going to look like. So I press out. Okay, I'm now in, I'm now in double action mode, so I've got to decock. Okay, the gun is safe. I'm going to go ahead and slide forward, decock it.
Okay. So all good center mass hits. We threw a couple out in nine, threw a couple of our headshots out. But considering I don't shoot this gun and, you know, maybe 50 rounds a year or something, I bought this gun primarily for teaching and training people who are interested in, in learning a double action uh, auto loader. And uh, also the quality of the SIGs is just one of those guns you want to own. So that's kind of what that looked like. We're going to do one more string of just fast fire and uh, we'll see what that looks like. So my final thoughts on the SIG 226. Excellent gun, extremely well made, very, very accurate. And for those of you who are going to dedicate yourself to this uh, platform, you will have great success using this gun. Um, you know, they're, they're just, there's a reason why, uh, you know, the SEALs use them. There's a reason why law enforcement uses them. And given the fact that the SEALs shoot hundreds of thousands of rounds in practice and really beat the crap out of their stuff, I would say that's a pretty gosh darn good indication. The one point I would make is it's very important if you're going to practice and use this gun is to work on both the double action trigger pull and every time shooting through that and then decocking and really being atten attentive to the fact that you've got to use that decock before you holster. Just, it's like the number one safety thing. And I come to come ranges and I teach people and often, you know, people do not think about that and they don't realize that they're got to use this gun the way it was intended to be used. And that is to use the decock lever whenever you're holstering the gun or coming back down to a ready position. So if you've engaged a threat, right? Boom, 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 you've shot the threat down. You've done your scans, you've looked around, maybe you've done a tactical reload whatever, and the situation is safe, decock. you got to decock the gun, and then you're either going to have it in decock, and if there's another threat, you're going to have to come back out and press it. But what too many people uh, can get in the habit of doing if they're not used to this platform is they shoot the gun and they leave it cocked with a very short trigger pull, and they stick it in their holster and can get a unintended live round firing in a direction they did not want. So anyway, that's it. That's it for the two, SIG 226. Uh, really like it. Not the best fit for my hands. Uh, some ergonomic issues that I don't really like. It's fat, it's thick, but if you practice and you have a little bit bigger hands than I do, this is an excellent, excellent self-defensive uh, handgun and certainly something that you could bet your life on. So appreciate you watching. Thanks so much, and as always, Stay safe.